There's concern among South West GPs that proposals for them to provide a seven-day service are unrealistic. According to the Royal College of General Practitioners, the region needs more than 200 extra GPs by 2020 to cope with the increasing number of people living with long-term conditions. Here's our health correspondent, Jenny Warrand. Can I help? For many of us, it's our first contact with our GP surgery, and the person on the phone may appear to us to be preventing us getting what we need. But we will be one of dozens of patients phoning, and it's the receptionist's job to decide who best to see us. Like many practices, they've struggled to recruit enough GPs, so they've had to innovate. Here, they have a nurse practitioner, paramedic practitioner and pharmacist. But patients sometimes think they've been fobbed off when they don't see the doctor. We can assess patients of what they present with, and then we can plan their care. We can do referrals to the hospital if we think they need to go in. Um, myself, I can prescribe so I can give them immediate treatment. Our longer life expectancy is adding pressure throughout the health system. We'll soon need more GP posts, but the priority now is on filling the existing one in ten empty posts at a time when there's increasing expectation and pressure to provide a seven-day service. I don't think the resources and the manpower there to do the, the seven-day service. I think it's a fantastic idea in theory. Um, however, in practice, there aren't enough doctors really for a five-day service. The government has pledged to train more GPs, but the Royal College of General Practitioners says it's not enough, meaning GP practices will have to continue to innovate to provide the care we need. Jenny Walrand, BBC Spotlight.